Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is part two in the Drawing an Owl series. This time we're going to be concentrating on drawing the beak and the face feathers. So let's get started. So the beak has lots of deep grooves in it and we need to create the illusion of these within our drawing. So I'm starting it by coming in with some of my darkest colours to start off with and just blocking those in where I see the darkest areas. I'm now coming in with a cream pencil and you can see my pencil strokes are going in the direction of the grooves and trying to create that illusion of there being the grooves on the nose. So I'm going to move backwards and forwards between my darker and lighter colours to create this illusion. I'm going around the nostrils at the moment, creating the highlights that are around, around those nostrils. Now I'm coming in with the black to make the shadows. So moving forward through this piece, I'm going to be using quite a lot of dark um, dark to create the depth of the groove and then light to highlight the, the outside of those so you really get the illusion of depth of the grooves in the nose. Um, I've introduced some blue, a light blue at the moment, because there is blue in the reference and if you don't add that, that will make your piece look quite flat and less realistic. So I'm adding in a lot of the cream at the moment on, on the most highlighted areas of the beak. Um, just trying to block in as and where I see things from the reference. A lot of the side of this beak will be covered over by feathers, but I still wanted to get it in there um, so you can see those pieces underneath the feathers that will lay over the top of it. I'm now coming in with a soft white to find some more of the highlights on the nose, especially that bit that curves round. That is the piece that catches the most light and is the lightest part of, of the nose. Um, now doing some of this side piece, which as I said before, will be covered over with a lot of other feathers later, later on. In with that blue again, um, I'm also going to introduce a darker blue soon, but I'm using the grey at the moment just to keep create some of the deeper grooves in the nose. And then back in with the cream, just to highlight the edges of those. So you can see already that the beak is starting to take quite take on quite a grooved appearance um, this is just the under layer at the moment I will work it out with a blend and stump which I'm coming in with now real light pressure so I don't sort of lose all the detail that I've put in um, but just enough so I can now come and work over with with what will be the top layer and I'm just adding a few a few little stray feathers that I can see there um, just re-highlighting the the nostril where I lost some of that where when I blended it out and again still working in that that motion where all, all my pencil strokes are, are going in the direction of the grooves um, I'm using a range of different different greys I'm now coming in with a, a darker blue an even darker blue this isn't the darkest navy that's in the carbon fellow but it's like the next one down because I really want to sort of bring that colour into the piece that, that, that there is in the reference photo and again using the lighter colours to highlight the grooves and the darker colours to, to create the depth within them. I'm just glazing over that light blue over lots of it so it all ties in together. Using the cream again just to, to catch those brightest highlights that are on the beak. Just coming in with a bit more of that dark blue first. And every time just keep looking backwards and forwards to your reference photo, seeing if there's anywhere that you need to make any little adjustments because it will be those real small details, just those last pieces that you add that that really sort of bring it up, bring the, the drawing up to looking more realistic. So now I'm coming in with a dark grey. There's going to be lots and lots of layers to these hairs, feathers around around the beak and the eyes because I, there, there's lots of them and you can only create that illusion of, of there being lots of feathers by creating lots of layers. So you'll see I will work dark to light and then I will come back over and, and do the same again. 
So I'm really, they're going in all different directions on the face of the bird here. So I'm just really concentrating on which one's going in, in each direction. And it really doesn't matter if you make a mistake, you can go over it, but just paying lots of attention to, to the direction that the feathers are going in. Now coming in with the soft white, just to highlight some of those more. And now back to the darks, just really bringing them, bringing up the, the shadows between them. And you can see already by doing that, you're starting to really see that there's a big sort of difference in how deep and detailed they look. On this piece, I'm creating just a real basic soft underlayer, just concentrating on the direction and light and dark at this stage. So I started with some white and then some grey and I'm just going to tie it all together with the cream. And really, really softly blend everything out. And I'm using a really, really light touch when I blend out here. And now I'm going to come, come over the top, add in more detail. There's lots of little sort of almost like little Christmas tree motions to, to create that if you'll see on the reference photo if you if you download it there's lots of cross hatching sort of within the feathers and you haven't got to follow it detail for detail and, and replicate it exactly but you need to create that illusion of there being cross hatching and even my touches with the pencil here are really really light um because it is such a soft area of feathers. So I'm coming in with a really, really light touch and just adding de details piece by piece. But now this pencil that I'm using now isn't actually a pastel pencil. It is um, a white charcoal pencil. So when I want the really, really brightest highlights, this will be the pencil I use because I found that even when you use a titanium white pencil, you can't get the highlights that you can by using, a, you know, the, the white charcoal pencil is definitely the best to use. I have linked in the description all the products that I've used. If you want to take a look, there's there's links to those as well. Now coming in with the black around where I've done the white um, and you can see that that's brought it up another level and um, made the hair look like it's really, really sticking up around the nose. The area under, under this right eye as we look at it, that's a lot less detailed. There is this bright highlight that shows through under the feathers. So I've just blocked that in and I'm coming in with the beige colour and then gradually working up to my lights and darks as I see them. So I started with the beige and then I thought that that would be easier to then add the darker ones and just softening all that out now. Now coming over with the white again and creating all those little crisscross ones that overlap the face onto the backing of the paper. I'm gradually building up to where I see the lightest lights and the darkest darks. I'm, I flip between my pencils quite a lot. Um, you know, don't get carried away with one colour and think, oh, this is looking great. Um, just keep keep flitting back between the different colours that you need to, to create the depth within the piece. And you can see by this, that I, I, I don't sort of like tackle the whole drawing in one piece. I work it piece by piece. Here I am having a little practice just to, just to the side on a piece of pastel mat, just practicing the, the strokes that I plan to use around the feathers on the head. And it's a good idea just to have a little practice before you put pen to paper. Um, if there's anything you're not quite sure of. So I'm coming in slowly here and you can see I'm doing some outlines with dark because there's quite a lot of shadow around these feathers here. So I'm outlining them quite dark and then coming in and doing the feathers. And as I work this piece, I'm just gradually going to work up sort of, and I, I'm not copying the reference exactly. I'm, I'm copying direction and length and the main areas of dark and light. Um, so you can see again, I'm swapping between my lighter greys and my mid-tone greys quite a lot, 
working in where I see shadows and, and highlights, but I'm not copying each feather piece by piece because I, I feel that that would, you know, take much, much too long. So yeah, it's just mo mostly concentrating on direction and length and, and the areas of light and dark. And I'm at the top of the head, I'm I'm making sure that I go over where I've blocked that background in, so it doesn't end out end up looking like a cut out object. If if you go over, it will make it look much more realistic. Building up quite a lot of dark there because I don't want to lose that dark area above that eye. And you can see here that I've changed because the feathers become a slightly different shape and and a, quite a bit longer on this piece. So you see there I've changed shape, and I'm now blending out and really really softly I'm using hardly any pressure at all just really because I don't want to lose all the detail that I've put in already but I do want to be able to work a nice second layer over the top of that again you know I'm, I'm, I'm now moving on to a new area so I'm starting in by blocking in the darkest darks and the lightest lights And just blending out now as I go. So now when I come through to work the, the second layer, I'm concentrating initially on really finding my darkest spots and then the lightest lights. I've got the base tone that I like the look of already that I've that I've blended out. So I'm really concentrating more now on details. Where where do I want to put the real dark bits and the real light bits? I'm I'm coming in and I am drawing fresh feathers over the top of the first layer of feathers that I drew. So that will really create the illusion of of how an owl is really with layers of feathers sitting on top of each other. And you can see by really darkening up the darks and lightening up the lights around in, in between his eyes there, how that really, you can now really start to see that the head is taken on a 3D form. It looks a lot less flat. So we're now approaching the end of this second part of the tutorial. In the third part, we'll be working through all the rest of the different feathers in the body and finalising and coming in and finalising the details in the eyes and the beak. I hope you enjoyed this part. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next part. Thank you.